Nearly every single game that you've ever played will render the graphics using a bunch of triangles. From the buttons on the main menu, to the terrain that makes up the world, to even the tiny decorative rock next to a lake in Skyrim, all of them will be made out of triangles. And without getting into too much detail, the reason it's done this way is because triangles just happen to be the most efficient primitive to work with. But how exactly are these triangles used? So each one is made out of three vertices, where each vertex tells whatever rendering backend you're using, in my case OpenGL, how this triangle should actually be rendered. For example, the vertex positions, which is used for some calculations to work out how to actually convert the 3D coordinate of that vertex to the 2D coordinates of your screen. The texture coordinates, which tells OpenGL which part of a texture should be used to render that part of the triangle. And the vertex normal, which is sort of the direction that vertex is facing, which is used for lighting calculations. So yeah, the majority of games do it this way, and Open Builder is no different, where the entire world is just made out of a bunch of triangles angles, like you can see here. In other words, the entire world is made up of these vertices which contain a lot of data about their positions, their texture coordinates, and some basic lighting information, which unfortunately has a few drawbacks. And this is because all of this information about the vertices that makes up the world needs to be stored somewhere, and if you're not careful, all of this information can end up taking up quite a lot of video memory. Which is exactly what's happened with Open Builder, because all of the vertices that make up the world contain a lot of information. So each vertex of a block face contains the following information. There are three floats for the vertex position, which is 12 bytes, three floats for the texture information, which is an additional 12 bytes, and then one float for the simple lighting that I do, which is another 4 bytes, which comes to a total of 28 bytes per vertex in the world, which then adds up to 168 bytes for the six vertices per block face. That might not seem too bad, but if we take a very large world of 32 by 32 chunks and make it completely flat, which is the best case scenario in terms of the number of block faces there are, then suddenly we're using up 176 megabytes of video memory. And that's just the best case scenario, so as soon as you make the world with actual world generation and add a bunch of flowers and trees or whatever, then suddenly that's a lot of memory being used up. But luckily for us, we're making a voxel game, and there's a few very common methods that we can use to actually more than half the amount of video memory being used. The first and probably the most well-known method is greedy meshing. This is where you take multiple block faces and then combine them into a single quad. So going back to the best case scenario, where we have a chunk with 1024 block faces, using greedy meshing that can be reduced to just a single block face. But unfortunately for me, the article which greedy meshing actually comes from is a bit... yeah. So rather than doing that, we're going to be looking at a different method, which is literally reducing the memory usage per vertex by using a lot of assumptions that we can make about the voxel world and the game itself. So first of all, let's have a look at the vertex positions in the world, which right now are stored using 3 floats per vertex using a total of 12 bytes. The thing is, the chunks in our world are 32 by 32 by 32 in size, which means that the maximum local position that a vertex can be to a chunk is 32, 32, 32. So 32 is a pretty small number, and the maximum number of bits needed to store that is just 6. In other words, the 12 bytes that we were using before to store the vertex positions can instead be reduced to just 18 bits. So second of all, we are also storing three floats for the texture information per vertex. That is, two floats for the texture coordinates, which tells OpenGL what part of a texture to use. And the different textures for the blocks in the game are being stored in an OpenGL texture array, which means that the third float is for the index of the array, which tells OpenGL which texture to use for that block face. And the nice thing about this means that the first two floats, which tells OpenGL which part of the texture to use, doesn't actually change from block type to block type, which means I can just completely get rid of those and instead define them in the vertex shader. This means that the only thing that really needs to be stored for the texture information is that texture array index, and if I assume there's going to be less than 500 blocks in the game, then I can store this information using just 9 bits. In other words, the texture information per vertex can be reduced from 12 bytes to just 9 bits. 
I just realised I made a mistake there because there's actually an additional three bits needed per vertex to tell OpenGL which texture coordinate to use as they are defined in the vertex shader now, which means that per vertex the texture coordinates are being stored in 12 bits, not 9 bits. But yeah, even so, that's still a pretty good decrease. So anyways, the final thing to optimise is the lighting, which right now is being stored using a 4 byte float. And what this is for is every single block face in the world is given a value depending on the direction that it's facing in. So that in the fragment shader, when I multiply this number by the RGB values from the texture, it can either make the block face appear quite dark or in full light or something like that. And there's only actually 4 possible values for this number in the range of 0.4 to 1. So to optimise this, I multiplied each one of these numbers by 5 to put them in the range of 2 to 5, which means I only actually need 3 bits to store this number, because that's how many bits are needed to store 5, which is the maximum number it can be. And then in the shaders, I divide this number by 5 to get it back in the original range of 0.4 to 1, so I can get that nice lighting effect you saw earlier. So yeah, that's a decrease from 1 byte to just 3 bits. To sum this all up, vertex positions have gone from 12 bytes to just 18 bits, texture information has gone from 12 bytes to 11 bits, and finally lighting information has decreased from 4 bytes to just 3 bits. Which means that overall the information stored per vertex has decreased from 28 bytes to just 4 bytes. And this allows me to pack all this data into a single 4 byte number before sending it over to the shader where it will be unpacked and processed. In case you're wondering whether this has any sort of performance impact, I recorded the FPS before and after and there was literally no difference at all, so that's all good. So anyways, going back to the best case scenario, which was the 32 by 32 world that's completely flat, the memory usage of that has decreased from 176 megabytes to just 25 5 megabytes, which is a pretty good improvement. So yeah, that's one way that you can optimise a chunk mesh to take up a lot less video memory. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. So anyways, quick shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you Kelly Crazyman, Timothy Gibbons, Kerr Yu, Timo Schroeder, Alan Fernandez, Ben Sayers, Michael Kirsch, Lucas Durenberger, Neil Blakely Milner, and Nate Brown. Thank you all for the support. Um, so anyways, once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.